and, and so what's the secret to finding those those matches made in heaven like what's the what's the real what it was that a you know it was that a branding awareness post was that a sales related post like what are the what are, what are the key elements that go into creating uh you know a viral a campaign that has that sort of viral 10x times roi yeah i mean it's always difficult but it comes down to i mean once you start getting the types of influences that do work for your brand it's easy to kind of repeat again and again but it's there's a bit of testing to kind of find where that ground lives and a lot of people get put off or disheartened during that testing process and then they're like influencer marketing is not for me uh, but if you can kind of find that right relationship and that's usually the best kind of factors are in terms of brand and influencer alignment um, so one way that I like to put it as a formula is influencer uh, like influence equals reach so an influencer's following and engagement times relevancy so you know their area of expertise or niche that they're in times relationship and their relationship with their audience and there's you know in influencer marketing like any marketing there's kind of there's a mix of metrics and like I put them I call them like hard metrics or soft metrics so like hard metrics are your kind of quantitative metrics that are like okay it had you know the influencer has 200,000 followers they get 3,000 likes on a post, like whatever else. A lot of brands get very distracted by these exact metrics, but it's actually the softer metrics, so the more qualitative metrics that form the best relationship. So it's actually, you know, things like the way that their audience has, like the emotional connection their audience has with them. And of course, those things are very hard to quantify, but if you look for kind of the right indicators, you're kind of able to succeed in that way. So I think that it's really important not only to look at, you know, not just to get distracted by being like, oh my God, Kim Kardashian has a hundred million followers. I want her to post my brand. Like she may not, she is a very debatable case as well though. She may have, like, she has a great relationship with some of her followers that watched her on TV for years. Like some of the younger followers have basically grown up watching her show, yeah. however appropriate that is or not. <laughs> yeah. and at the same time, people know that she actively promotes, you know, brands and products that she probably doesn't use. She's got a credibility issue, while at the same time, she's got, she still has somewhat of a relationship with her followers. So it, she's a tough one. But it's and a, she's so big that she overcomes a, a lot of that, right? Like, you know, she, she, like you say, there's different segments of these people's followers as well. So like. And and I and she'll make it up in volume in a lot of cases, I'm sure. But her costs would be just astronomical. Yeah, something like three hundred thousand dollars a post on Instagram. It's not bad work if you can get it. That's no. uh, that's incredible. So 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 these soft. So how do you go about assessing these soft metrics? Like it really is it really an eye test? Is it really like you really have to go in there and make sure that there's meaningful conversation happening, that they're affecting people on an emotional level, or what are some ways you go about that? Yeah, so I like to kind of just set some different indicators that I can look at and kind of go through a bit of a list in a way of ways that, you know, things you might, I guess, overlook. Um, so, but in terms of their relationship with their audience, um, a lot of it comes down to obviously communication and the way that they're able to speak to their audience in the language that their audience already knows and trusts. And it's a two-way street as well. So a lot of the influencers that have the best relationships with their audience are consistent. They show up all the time. Uh, they might even do, you know, kind of real life events and stuff where they meet up with the audience. You know, they go to events, they do those meetups and people like swarm them kind of like when they're posting things like that, you know how engaged their following is in that way. When they're following, are asking them actual, real questions rather than just being like, pretty, that's lovely, amazing. Those sort of generic comments mm. don't, you know, they don't equate to much. So, but if people are like, you know, where exactly did you get, you know, for a mummy blogger or something, where exactly did you get that pram? What did you do when your baby was crying up all night? Like blah, blah, blah. And if they actually interact back with that audience, so that two-way communication is so, so valuable. And if you can see that an influencer does that and they're going to represent your brand in that way as well and jump in and answer questions when somebody's like 
confused about it because it's not just the post it's the way that you then engage them upon the post it's kind of the campaign support uh, that the influencer can offer as well so i mean one option is you know paying them a little bit more so that they are around after they do post and saying like i want an hour of your time to interact with your followers as they're asking you questions it's not just thinking of it like a get in get out like okay i've just bought it's not an ad like you didn't buy if you wanted to buy an ad it's a lot cheaper just to buy an ad that's going to be seen by you know two hundred thousand people sometimes yeah well it's debatable you can it, there's ways that you can do it but um yeah so basically it's just trying to work with influencers who do have that really kind of engaged relationship with their audience um and I will go through a few more of those factors um, in some more content that I create with you guys soon. Yeah, nice. We can we can tease that a little bit. Where uh, you know, obviously, the e-commerce all star secrets uh, series that we're producing is going to culminate in a uh, in a, a free course that we're producing with several of these amazing uh, all stars that we're working with, and Greta is going to be handling the uh, the influencer marketing component of it. So let's talk a little bit about. Uh, you know, just getting started with it. You know, I, we just did this big survey. We did we we surveyed 500 uh, e-commerce professionals, and we asked about you know where their focus was. And of the 500 people, like it was still uh, you know a large percentage of these people were were still mainly using Facebook ads, like m mostly.